Hey, folks, in this episode of TWIP, it's all about WPPI, the Wedding and Portrait Photographers International Conference. This episode of TWIP is brought to you by Datacolor and the new Spider X Pro. The Spider X Pro is designed for serious photographers and designers seeking a fast, accurate, and easy to use monitor calibration solution. You can check out the Spider X Pro at spiderx.datacolor.com. This episode of This Week in Photo is brought to you by Creative Live. Head over to creativelive.com and choose from over 1,000 amazing courses, use the code TWIP10 at checkout to get $10 off your first purchase. This is TWIP. All right, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. Uh, lots of people are, are are freshly back from the WPPI conference in Las Vegas, and lots of people have stories about what went on. I have a couple of stories myself, but I wanted to do a show, just kind of a wrap up while it's fresh in our minds about the, the trade show and just trade shows in general, as well as this particular show and and. What are some of the pluses and minuses and takeaways that that people that attended the show are, are, are taking away? And to do that, I'm bringing on two friends of mine, Mr. Troy Miller, who's a, a wedding and portrait photographer. And I'm also bringing on Mr. Christopher Berry, who's a good friend of mine. He's also a photographer who loves his Fuji gear. And we were trying to get him to move over to the Panasonic side, but he didn't <laughs> budge. But we're, we're going to talk about <laughs> we're going to talk about all that on the show. Let's start with introductions. Troy Miller, for people who don't know who you are, why don't you give us a quick elevator pitch about Troy Miller and uh, and what you do and who you are? Um, I'm a creative. I've been a full time wedding photographer for the almost 30 years now. This is 27 years this year. Uh, make my living full time in the wedding industry with my wife and I. So. And when I'm not doing weddings, I like to blow things up, take abstract photos, those kind of things. Um, well, let, let, so that's my sanity. Let's just be clear. When you say blow things up, you like to photograph things at high speed. You're not you're not doing anything illegal. Yeah, no, that. no, no, no. Yeah, I guess that's it's, fair. It yeah. is 2019, <laughs> Troy Miller. <I> just, <laughs> that description I'm was saving casual, you from yourself. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that's my sanity. Uh, you know, like fine art, abstract kind of stuff. But yeah, I've been in the wedding industry for a long time. This was my 10th year in a row, I think, to WPPI. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, we got lots to talk about because you you are clearly an authority on WPPI. Uh, Christopher Berry uh, is on the show as well. Good friend, man. What? So you were there. You were running around doing the, the, the typical WPPI thing, making, you know, talking with old friends, looking at booths, taking classes, going to parties. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself before we dive into the, the ins and outs of WPPI. Uh, I do portraiture events, uh, the occasional wedding, very rare, but occasional wedding. Um, and I'm also licensed to do commercial drone video and photography. And I'm in, uh, I'm in Arizona and I'm, uh, a gear freak who I'm trying to tame that. I'm trying to <laughs> recover down a few notches. Wait, yeah. Would you get would... recovering? I actually am able to claim my losses from photo Kina. Oh, really? <laughs> I found that out yesterday. So I feel so Good. Uh, okay, well, tell us about that. So people that don't know about what happened at Photokina, what happened? Yeah, so Photokina, um, I went to uh, Amsterdam from Cologne, and on the train ride, um, a bunch of people on my car got robbed. And so my computer, my camera, um, all my working drives that I did, you know, was hoping to do some, some content for for the channel, um, everything was taken. Um, so I finished my trip and came back and talked to my wife and she said, forget about it. They're not going to cover it. But then we kind of, you know, kind of talked to one of the reps and they were like, yeah, you're covered up to like $113,000 or something what? with my homeowner's insurance policy. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I got an adjuster calling me sometime today or tomorrow and I can give them all the details and, you know, it's a thousand bucks and I get whatever percentage adjusted, um, in a, in a check. All right. So, well, look at that. So yeah. I'm going to I'm going to say that you now you can use that extra thousand dollar windfall and go buy the new Panasonic Lumix S <laughs> full frame mirrorless camera or at least you buy a piece of it. <laughs> I'm just trying to be strong here. I don't need you. For my That's the wrong thing. <laughs> like a Try gear not. drug dealer. Come on, man. Everybody's doing it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, I love it. All right, guys. Well, let, let's, let's let's switch gears and talk about the show WPPI. We're like yeah. I said, we're just on the heels of that. Um, uh, I want to, you know, I want to get straight from the horse's mouth. Chris, let's continue with you, man. Let's start with you about your overall feelings for the show. You've been to WPPI before. So, uh, you know, candid, no holds barred. You're a, like a core sample of a typical attendee to that show. You know, you paid your way there. You paid your way back. You paid for your hotel. You paid to get into the show. You weren't sponsored. So this was this was money coming out of your gear budget, let's say. Right. So, right. so was it worth it for you? And tell me about your, your overall experience there. I, on one hand, um, it it wasn't worth it, um, but on another hand, it was. And the reason why it was is because I still get to engage with people who are on on some so, on some point in the path toward whatever journey they're on that we kind of all share. Mm -hmm. So it's good to you know be involved with the community, good to get inspiration, good to meet people because some people I don't see you know, more than once a year and it's mm -hmm. at WPPI. Yeah. So on, on that hand, it's, it's great, but it's, it's, it, I don't know what I'm going to actually make of it until, you know, I complete a whole year and I look back and I say, okay, this is what I was inspired to do at last WPPI. Here are the connections that I continued to, 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 to keep. And here are the new ones that I made. And here's how I've leveraged that kind of upfront expense on, you know, going to Vegas and, you know, going to the expos and, and, and things of that sort. So, I, so I guess it's good and bad. The good part, you know, is obvious, but you know, if I don't make good on my, my investment and my trip and my time away from home and opportunity loss, et cetera, et cetera, um, then it, it won't be worth it. But that part's kind of my responsibility. Yeah. Um, it, you know, getting there was great. I drove up. Um, I immediately noticed that it was less, a lot less people than, than last year or the, or the year before. It seemed a lot smaller, but mm -hmm. you know, it's always good to get out and hang out and be nerds. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot you. Yeah. You're in Arizona. So you, you, you have the, the luxury of being able to drive to WPPI yeah. versus the rest of us who have to fly. I mean, I'm in California. I could have driven out, but I'd still be on the road right now. I think if I had, <laughs> 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 All right, Troy Miller, you you are close as well. You're down in Southern California, so you're able to drive out to yep. to Vegas. So you didn't have that plane ticket. Although my flight was only you know around a hundred bucks to get out there, so I'm I'm gonna say I won because I didn't have to drive. <laughs> it would take me an hour. <laughs> what are your overall thoughts on the show? Um, you know, it, it it was weak, and I was disappointed. But you know, I've been going for ten years, so I remember when it was back at the MGM. And it was in it was in two rooms. You know, you had like the the big room that had all the big uh, camera manufacturers and the labs were in there and it was giant. And then we had the secondary room where you had I don't want to say the smaller vendors, but, you know, there were there were guys in there like Spider Holster and Magmod and 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 Loom Cube, those guys. And you could not you could not walk those two floors in one day. You mm -hmm. could not do it. <clears throat> and, you know, I go there to be inspired, uh, to see what new gear is out there in the world. I'm, I don't see that anymore. Um, the, the, the lectures, the talks, the photographers there, I feel like they're all advertisements for, for them to sell their, whatever that they have, you know, whether it's a subscription or it's a product mm. and I'm okay with commercialism. I'm okay with that. But, you know, at my, at my level, I, I'm, I'm like Chris, I want to go socialize. And so for me, I always look at WPPI as a vacation. But when I walk into a, to a speaker, a master class or a photo walk or whatever, they're just not what they used to be. You know, and I feel like everything that I go into all the classes, they want to sell me something. And that 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 kills the mood for me. And it makes it hard for me to want to recommend somebody else to go. Um I'm sure it was good for somebody that doesn't have the history that I have, right? So I not to be not to be too too harsh. I see what it was and then I see what it is and I'm sort of missing that energy. But is is um, like if you look at it from that stamp the standpoint of what it was and comparing the the past to the future times have changed, right? We're in we're in 2019 now back when it was at the MGM in the you know, when it was a larger show, there were different dynamics at play. Right. So, oh, yeah. You know, there weren't all these uh, the myriad of webinars happening, you know, people training on software and creative live and Linda and all this stuff happening where you could 
you could be trained uh, or, or you, you, if you went there, you would learn stuff that you wouldn't otherwise be able to learn. Now you can learn that stuff, you know, and I would say you can also get the information on the products that are being released online as well. Sitting, you know, sitting in your boxers, watching TV with your laptop on your lap. So that said, you know, if you look at it, Troy, if you look at it through the lens of, you know, we, we are, we've, things have changed and times have changed. Is it, is it time, is it time for WPPI to morph into something else or should it keep going like it is and and just sort of stay the course? Where, where do you fall on that? No, I, I think that <clears throat> I think that WPPI has a place in the market, and I think it's a th it's a thing that people want to go to, and they have an advantage that it's a destination. You know, Vegas is a destination. We want to go there. Um, it, we we want to hang out. But I think that the organizers need to be sensitive to the idea that I already know that the Panasonic S one is there. I already know what the Z7 and the Z6 look like. I already know all this stuff exists. I don't need, I'm not going to be thrilled to see it. I'm there, I'm there to go beyond that. So the organization, the education needs to evolve, right? The, the attendees are smarter for the most part. Yeah. Uh, they already have this information. Like I know what a reflector is. Most, most attendees know what that stuff is, even if they're new. A lot they of know them were lighting. carrying it around with them. I saw one guy carrying reflectors and five cameras and tripods and everything <laughs> with them around the show floor. Yeah, and 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 I think that I think that you know they're not shooting over the heads of the attendees to try to make them strive to be better. They're just trying to entertain them. And being an organizer of events myself, I know how hard that is is to read the attendees. Mm -hmm. But I think that if WPPI sits back, if the organizers sit back and say, okay, you know, who are my attendees? How can I reach out to them? Am I willing to lose the pros and just bring in, you know, the, the new photographers because they're excited? That's fine. That's that's their market. Mm -hmm. But but for me, all the lectures that I sat in, I sat in maybe half a dozen. I'm, I'm curious to hear Chris's uh, feedback. Um, they were very, very basic. I mean, there was one lecture I sat in and they're literally like, okay, so imagine that I have a reflector here and imagine I have a bride here but what? Why didn't you Wait, bring a reflector on, and a bride? Right? You're on stage, and there's like there's like 75 people in the room that came because of the topic, and and that's it. That's yeah. that's that's your. Yeah, yeah, I can see yeah. how that'd be frustrating. Chris, do you, did you yeah. you have a, a you echo that experience? Yeah, I I, I do, and and it, it's it's pretty bad. It definitely does echo what what Troy was saying. I was at a photo walk that it was random because I've I've been to a lot of <laughs> photo walks and that's not necessarily like what I would want to do at WPPI. Um, but I was just walking to the expo and I was a little early and I thought, oh, let me go see what's going on with photo walks. And um, I uh, went to Jason Vincent's uh, photo walk and, you know, we're hanging out and, you know, he's, you know, showing certain techniques and I was chopping it up with one of the, one of the attendees at the photo walk and she just let out on me. Oh my gosh. And the masterclass was terrible and I can't believe I paid for it. And this is actually the first time on this free photo walk that I'm actually learning something that I didn't know before I came to WPPI. And she said she wouldn't she wouldn't come back to WPPI oh, no. because she was so disappointed in the content of the of the paid master classes. You know, but I encouraged her, you know, hey, you know, Jason Vincent's a great guy. You know, I've known him for a little bit. You know, keep learning from him. I'm glad you get you're getting something out of it. But it was definitely disheartening because I think a lot of people are gonna go to WPPI to learn something um, different than what they can access online, like Troy was saying. Like you guys are saying, there's so much access and there's so much available at, you know, at the click of a button or the search of YouTube or whatever, that it does make it hard to one, I'm assuming, find people that know something new and different and special mm -hmm. to then teach to someone in person. Because as someone that learns something and they're excited about it, they want to share it, it's very like enticing to go online and give it away. You know, but then when you're hiring, I, I would assume when you're hiring people to teach your master class, there's something that is unique and special and enticing that you can take home from that moment and implement when you go back home. But if that's not there and you ha all you have is something basic to take, then you have people who are disappointed in their their master class that they paid for. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, on the flip side, there's awesome stuff being taught by people who aren't 
on the platform right. who are, you know, at cl- it's, it's kind of a, a small boutique type of experience, which I think is part of the reason why some of these larger events may see a dip because, you know, Sony has their, you know, B alpha thing, you know, where they have events in different cities and, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. Fuji had their festival and there's different, the Panasonic had the S one thing in Austin, you know, so there's so many opportunities in these big cities to like, get that inspiration or get those skills and then you can put them into practice immediately. I guess it makes it challenging for people to actually get what they pay for after a year of, you know, learning at imaging or learning at this event or that event, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, we're not rich, right? So you, you have to sort of pick and choose which of these events you're going to go to and make that decision. Um, and and if if you have an experience like what you guys are describing at a show, then, you know, you have to factor that in next year if you're going to, you know, go again, unless there's something that that changed about that show. And that's where I want to kind of segue into um, armchair quarterbacking, you know, for all three of us <clears throat> looking at shows like WPPI and particularly WPPI, which is what this episode is about. What needs to change? Like, what what would make you guys and and Troy? I'll, I'll start with you since you you have the most longevity in terms of attendance on on WP you know WPPI events. What would and I'm I'm gonna I'll preface this with there's a probably a 99 percent chance that the conference organizers are watching you right now. So <laughs> <laughs> so no, but that's a what, what would you change? Like, if you had them in a room right now and you're like, you know what? I'm a wedding and portrait photographer. I'm successful. I've I've been shooting for nearly 30 years. I've gone to many, many WPPIs. I've seen the trajectory of change. I've gone to this last one. Let me give you some advice on how to make how to change this show so that someone like me will want to go again. What would you tell them? Sure, sure. Um, well, I would say, you know, right now the best speakers are in the booths for the camera manufacturers. They're the be- they're the best speakers, <clears throat> and it used to not be that way. So I used to be able to go into a, a platform class, and there would be there would be somebody there. Maybe I didn't even know him, but he's like a full time professional, and he's got a lot to teach, and he's very engaged and exciting to have people in his room. He didn't have products to sell at the end, and I don't have a problem with the product part, but it's it the whole thing shouldn't be an ad, and it's kind of turned into that. It was more at the end they would be like, hey, I got books at the back if you guys are interested, mm-hmm. but they were teaching actual actual hardcore content that everybody from the beginners to the advanced photographers could use. And and we've kind of lost that. But what I would say is that uh, if you were to build WPPI from scratch right now, if we were to sit down with the team and say, what is it going to look like? I don't think it's going to look like what it looks like. And what I would suggest is, you know, you've got photographers that are there for multiple days, but there's no trajectory on education. So on day one, I I don't learn about how to use an off-camera strobe. And then on day two or later in that day, I could learn how to use multiple lights. And then on day three, I learn how to work with models. And then day four or whatever, now, now I'm given a model and a space to shoot and I've got somebody roaming around. Like take the time to actually build on my education, whether I'm a beginner or advanced. And, and reach out to the people. What do you need to learn? What can I, what kind of track can I put you in? Because my instructors are going to be different than what a first year wedding photographers instructors are going to be. But I, I'm, I'm just, I just, I want to be, uh, I want to learn as well. You know, I want to hear what, what the pros have to say. I want to hear what skills they have. Yeah. yeah. So kind of go back to the drawing board and, and I understand that the corporate idea that you need to make money and it's expensive and it's hard to organize. I get that. But if the attendees aren't happy and they don't go away fulfilled, it's it's not worth it. And and I, I spent almost uh, almost two grand going to WPPI this year. Wow, almost two grand for travel, for food, for lodging, uh, and and that's that's a huge amount of money. Yeah, for me to lens. spend. That's the lens. Yeah. Well, it's it's a it's a wedding. Yeah. You know, I could yeah, I could right. shoot a wedding, and, but I, I spent a week there. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. uh, Chris, what about you, man? I, I'll throw the same question at you. You know, the, if you were armchair quarterbacking, you got the ear of the conference organizers and they said, hey, Chris Berry, we are going to retool WPPI for 2020. <laughs> we're going to make it into something completely new that appeals to people like you. You know, uh, what would what would get you back in the saddle? That's a really challenging question. But I, I do know that I, I, I like the 
expo floor and I like you know, being sometimes in arms reach to, you know, some of the, the, the upper echelon of, you know, these brands, the Canon reps and the, these reps mm-hmm. and the pro photos and whatever, yeah. but the there's access. a lot of amazing talent out there that is something, you know, you may not have seen them as people before. You may not have heard, um, you may have heard their names and seen their work, but you haven't had an opportunity to engage with them. And some of them are, you know, it's just like with the music industry to an extent, you know, you may hear, you know, such and such a rapper or a musician or whatever, and they have this new beat. Well, guys, it's not a new beat. You know, it, it was happening in, you know, inner city Baltimore in a certain club. And then, you know, somebody that liked that genre of music went in, borrowed it and blew it up kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I see a lot of, following on Instagram and things of that sort. And people are picking up little, you know, tips and tricks from each other. And it's great because it's a great environment to share and learn and grow. But then one person may have more eyes than the other. And then all of a sudden that awesome person that has a technique or a skill or a way of editing or whatever doesn't necessarily have that platform. And it would be nice to see some of those, you know, quote unquote, lesser name, but super talented people um, being brought to the stage to kind of attract a new environment or invigorate what's already going on at WPPI. Um, and then, you know, and, and, you know, some of the books that like the Rocky Nook booth um, at WPPI, there's tons of great people that they are publishing books for. Yeah. I would like to see some of those faces there. I would like to see people from different countries. Like, you know, Jan Gonzalez was there at Fuji. You know, I want to see Ben Bond, you know, from, I don't know what country he's from in Africa, but he's an amazing fashion photographer um, in, in, I can't remember what country, but he's amazing. Like where, where yeah. are these guys that are, you want to see fresh blood, right? You want to see fresh. Yeah, yeah like that, that's interesting. I was, and that's on my work, that's you know? that's on my list of questions to ask both of you guys. You know, because you walking the trade show floor, which is great. You know, for me, because I'm I'm I was speaking in the Panasonic booth as sort of the MC between the the Lumix uh, ambassador speakers there, but occasionally I got a chance to sort of leave the nest and go <laughs> go roam the floor a little bit. And, you know, and for me, just like you guys are saying, you know, it's like, oh, it's a reunion. It's old friends. And, you know, people that are speaking on stage, you know, at the in the Fuji booth and the Sony booth and, you know, Sarah France is over there doing her thing. And it's like, oh, all these familiar faces. I love this, you know. Um, But at the same time, I think maybe you're right, Chris. Maybe it's time to do a control alt delete and bring in a new generation of speakers not to say that the 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 current crop of speakers are the old generation but you know bring in people that haven't been there before that will bring that level of energy and excitement you know and sort of uh uh what's a you know randomness to the show you know and, and it's like you're saying chris i echo that as well making it more international and it is the wedding and portrait photographer international conference after all right so make right. it make right. it more make it more international so on that uh in troy i'll throw I'll, I'll put the ball back in your on your side of the court there the on the on the trade show floor itself continuing that line of thinking what would you like to see in the booth like you know all these different booths were doing different things and I, you know a lot of it's based on their budget and how much they can afford um right. but they're large booths you know like sony panasonic had their largest booth ever fuji had a really cool looking booth olympus had a slick booth you know um what resonates with you as an attendee troy uh that you'd want to see on the show floor do you like to see all that pageantry or are you just like you know what just show me the stuff show me your gear <laughs> that's all i know i I, I actually my my favorite my favorite part of the entire show is the the big camera manufacturers and the labs on the show floor because they don't have to like if you go sit in the Canon booth like I'll tell anybody if you've never been to WPPI you're gonna go go to the trade show and sit in all of the vendors go look at the the vendor like lecture list and pick your instructors and that's where you spend your whole day mm-hmm. because you know they're promoting Canon but they're not they're not over promoting it. And then they bring somebody up every 30, 45 minutes. Panasonic did the same thing. It's like it's fantastic to sit there. You can walk by. You can engage. And then, oh, that's a good idea. Now I can walk into the booth. I can go talk to a tech. And I can ask questions. Now, that's real-world engagement, yeah. right? That's like that's like what we do as a group when we're hanging out. And be like, oh, Chris, uh, I love the new – You know, you've got the new drone. That's great. Tell me about it. And it's like we can talk on a personal level and I can learn. 
Um, the, the talking heads in a lecture room, I think that, I think that, that, that methodology is out. It's boring. Mm -hmm. You just, you fall asleep in there that it's not very engaging and it's really difficult to keep people's attention there. So I love the show floor. That's where I want to be. That's the people I want to engage with and yeah. see the brand celebrities, if you will, uh, hang out in the booth because I also know that at that point they're the most approachable. Yeah. So I can walk up to Frederick if I don't know Frederick from TWIP. I can walk up and go, dude, it's Frederick and or or anybody else I see because that's what the show floor is about. Yeah. Do you feel the same way, Chris? You know, to, like having that level of access on the show floor versus sitting like like Troy was saying, sitting in a, you know, an early morning master class after a late night of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I, I do like the expo floor. I do. And, and I, I feel like maybe if there were the, the first word that comes to my mind is an usher, but maybe someone that's, you know, helping with the WPPI experience, maybe if there was mm. someone on the floor, maybe if there was something that, you know, showed if you were a first time, you know, attendee or something like that. But but yeah, I mean, there's so much to learn directly from the people that you've been following on Instagram or trying to, you know, recreate some of their their work with their inspo images or, or whatever. They're they're right right there i mean that's how i met you yeah i was like hey frederick Fred, 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 Fred <laughs> yeah I, I remember running away and there you were again yeah. and I was like, okay, get back here right now young man <laughs> but i was um, like security yeah, I mean, security like, the thing that i take away from this event really is how the community is still there. You know, there's, there's cool dinners and there's things, there's people that want to meet up, you know, there are things going on around WPPI and education and in community building and in inspiration and, you know, things of that sort that are really awesome. And I think the expo floor is kind of like the center of it. And I do remember my first WPPI was, was, it was at the MGM and it was, it was, it was huge to me. It was like, whoa, it was my first f photo conference. And, mm -hmm. you know, you had technology companies and software companies and business management companies and print companies and, you know, bags and things of that sort in one area. And then you had all the tech. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, there were a couple of places that seemed empty. There was no DJI cube with drones buzzing around. Mm -hmm. um, I think there were a few anchor, large anchor companies that, that weren't there. And maybe that's a sign of, you know, where expos are trending for these larger companies and where they're actually getting their return. It may not be in big expos. It may be in this influencer or that, or in the, they're, they save the money and not, and not go. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, there's, it's, it's sort of, it's a catch 22, right? Cause you like Troy, you mentioned, you've been doing this for, you know, or going to these for a while and the attendance was really high and now it's not that high, right? Or it's lower than it was back in, you know, whenever you started going. Um, but that's, that's, that's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, especially right. from a, a, I would imagine from a booth uh, purchaser standpoint, one of these larger companies, because they want to, the pro purpose of a booth is to put your message and your products in front of a large group of potential customers. Um, but generally speaking, at these kinds of events, there's not a whole lot of ways to track ROI, right? These yeah, booths yeah. are really expensive. I mean, you can scan a badge, you know, and, and build an email list. But, you know, arguably, I could build an email list on a webinar that rivals <laughs> what, what, you know, many of these vendors would build by spending a half a million dollars on a trade show booth. So, Troy, throwing it back to you, how, you know, armchair quarterback again to the, to right. the conference organizers, or and people that are considering buying booths at these events, what's a way to monetize? Like, how do you, or or at least get some sort of measurable ROI from the amount, the expenditure? Because you know these people are having conversations with their boss and justifying the spend right. on WPPI. You know, and that's a chunk out of the budget every year. What what's what do they do? I know, I know, I know it's hard for the vendors. I mean, I have vendor friends that I talk to, and and they're they're discouraged by. Uh, the, the, the events as well. And I know that because I used to run and help run the state affiliate, the PPC, uh, Professional Photographers of California, they used to do an expo. And, mm -hmm. you know, slowly the, the bigger and more 
substantial companies decided like, look, you know, we're not getting enough return out of this. We can't get enough humans to walk through. Yeah. And that's how they measure their ROI is they look at how many people are in the booth, how many are going to walk past, and then it's up to them to engage. So that that maybe that isn't so much on WPPI as, as much as it is on the vendors. Now, I, I do tend to think, though, that in the in, in the days of past is that this was a trade show and it was all about the gear because way back when, when we first started going, I mean, there was very little education that was peripheral. They started adding that as a as a sort of an aside to the trade show. But I think people are going because they want education. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm kind of seeing that the trade show is really kind of secondary, which means fundamentally you need to change how education is happening. Mm-hmm. So. You know, if you take like Miller's lab, which is which is my lab, and I know that they that they were there and they had a smaller booth this year for them, just having people walk by doesn't work. But if they had a Miller's, uh, I don't know what you call it, like a Miller's track and educational track where they organized their speakers and they brought in their talent. Same thing for Panasonic. Same thing for Canon. Make the booth a classroom, right? Yeah. And now it's about education. And then there's the peripheral of of the uh, of, of the trade show. Now, I know the manufacturers are going to hate that idea mm-hmm. because they're the big funders. They really pay to make this event happen. But I'm just saying, the attendees are there for the experience and the education. I can get vendor information pretty much anywhere. But could you could you say continuing on my line of thought? Could you say, um, you know, I've been to a a, a TED event. You know, that, you know, the, you know, the Mm -hmm. TED talks. Right. And the way that they structure those is the way that, um, you know, even the beginning, I'm not I haven't been to one in several years, but I remember going and it was all about the talk. Right. It was all it was a lineup of speakers. You're like, oh, who's on next? And there were breaks between the talks where you could leave and go mingle in sort of a, a, a micro expo area where, you know, vendors had set up different products. Apple was there, had their latest whatever, you know, those sorts of things. And then when that's over, you know, everyone's checking their watches and you hear someone tapping a champagne glass and it's time to get back in there because, you know, right. Al Gore's going on to talk about climate change. You got to go sit down and listen to that. And when he finishes, there's another 45 minute break. You go out and look at the booth again would that kind of flow do you guys think would that kind of flow work for a wppi or is it an entirely different kind of audience what do you think i i, I would love that i mean i i would love it because i'm i'm literally there to be inspired and educated i would love to be able to also see just just the regular photographer uh what what he has to say about how he's doing his job i, I really it's hard for me like i have to personally like i was in the nikon booth um, and I'm hanging out. I just, I look over and there's somebody there and their tag says, you know, wedding photographer from, you know, wherever. And I'm like, Oh, Hey, how long have you been shooting weddings? And we talked for like 20 minutes. That was, that was the best learning experience. Cause he shared some things, how he uses his gear. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you know? one little conversation mm-hmm. will change your next year. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, to be fair, I love wandering the booze and I love talking to all the vendors and, and hearing what's happening. But it's it's not a trade show anymore, mm-hmm. and they don't even call it a trade show. They call it a conference. Yeah, but we're not conferencing. <laughs> you know, uh, right? Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, I like that. Chris, Chris Berry, what about you, man? Like, you know, if if you if you flip it on its head and do kind of a TED Talk thing, you think that would work? I mean, you know, uh, appealing to the albeit younger demographic. I'm putting you in that younger demographic, man. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Thank you. Embrace Thank it you. while you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like um, I like hands-on learning for sure. I like little, I like one or two things to work on, and then step into an environment to practice them, so they're they're kind of more solidified, um, and they they become part of me, and then go back and get a little bit more, and then come back. Um, I think that would work incredibly well. I I like being able to take the gear out on my own. Um, I know that there's the booths and you can put your hands on gear, but if it's a hot piece of gear, everyone's going to be around it. Yeah. And I don't know how many companies do this, but I could take out whatever Fuji camera I want and whatever Fuji lens I want, and I can swap out in and out of gear. I can try things. They can get, they give you memory cards and things like that. So you can go out and shoot in whatever environment you want and t- up to an hour until you know until the expo is, is done. And I think that's really cool because sometimes you don't, 
want anyone over your shoulder. You're a different type of learner. You want to take it and fiddle with it and just go shoot, see how you get on with it. And sometimes you want someone to walk you through it. Um, I think that would be that would be great. I do think that if like I was saying earlier, if there was someone on the floor, not just checking your badge and making sure you're OK to go in. But if there's someone who's there looking at your actual experience, you know, mm -hmm. what are you learning? Are you learning? You know, where have you been the most? You know, can I help you find this? You know, I know there's an app and I know there's, you know, reminders you get on your phone. But, man, if there was somebody just up and down the hall mm -hmm. saying, hey, Chris, you know, randomly I got selected to check in with people and, you know, blah, blah, blah. How's your experience going? Oh, you know, you can do this or you can do that mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. you know, things of that nature. Like, I don't know if there's a survey you take before you, as you register or whatever, but I know with some of these, um, like kind of boutique, smaller events, you know, they'll say, we're going to have these 10 teachers, you know, and you're going to pay X amount and you can choose your schedule. One of these classes from, you know, eight to 12, one of these classes from two to six, yeah. and then you have a small breakout and then you can meet vendors and you can have a portfolio review and, um, you know, things of that nature would be really awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, you know what I'd like to see, you know, I, in, in both of you guys probably know that I went to, we went to Disneyland earlier this year. And I, I, you know, you know, the anarchy that is Disneyland. Right? So right. And right. that was my first time there. You know, I managed to not avoid it my entire life. Uh, and now I was able to go and I'm regretting not having gone because it's, you know, it's amazing there. Um, I learned a lot about crowd management and how they do stuff because I'm looking at it as a attendee having fun. It's small world, all that stuff. But also is how are they how do they do this disney is a marketing machine and right. so i'm overlaying you know when i was at wppi i'm thinking okay here's a crowd that was a crowd in in my wouldn't it be cool if ellipsis sort of brain kicked in and i was thinking kind of like what you're saying chris like what if there there was like because there's like vip crowds at disney where you got your special badge that allows you to do certain things and, you know, your fast pass, you can go to the front of the line and all that kind of stuff. What if they, the WPPI folks man, kind of merge that so that kind of what you're saying, Chris, where there's a concierge type person that takes, this is gold group A and gold group A is going to first go to the Panasonic booth because you're going to hear from XYZ speaker. And then at 1230, we're moving over to the Fuji booth and we're going to learn all about the Fuji look. And then we're going right. over to Sony to talk about the history of full frame mirrorless. And then we're moving, you know, so you're kind of being ushered through as part mm -hmm. of a VIP instead yeah. of having to sort of wander around and figuring out on your own. Plus, and my thinking was like with a with like this VIP badge, along with the prestige of having this badge and mingling with people. Um, but you'd go to these booths and they'd have swag for you for these these people that are badge like this. Oh, you're in the so-and-so group. Here's your special badge, Mr. Johnson, or your your mm -hmm, special right. bag of of lens filters that only people that are in your group get, <laughs> right? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You and, know, and you know, getting access, uh, even even getting access like an hour before the show floor opens. Yeah. I mean, you know, like parties, press. all that. You know, well, you know, it's like it's like press. I mean, you know, trying to trying to be on the show floor and and go do an interview about a new camera is impossible. It's so loud, people walking through your shot. Mm -hmm. So even even press, you you can't you can't engage and ask the questions that you really need to engage from a tech who's stand, who's sitting there. And like in the Panasonic booth, like with the S1, I mean, there it is. It's on a podium. It's beautiful. But when there's a bunch of people in there, there's a guy doing a lecture. It's not really appropriate to record or ask a bunch of questions. It's right. like. It's it's about I think the overall experience and the flow and you really need to feel engaged and like you can get something out of this um, event and I think that's I think that's where the struggle is I think that's that's it if if you go away if you go away unhappy you're not going to come back no no absolutely. bottom bottom line bottom line right. and right. and well then the, the you know we're we're the hour is almost over here. Um, when, when you guys look at this, you know, sort of talking, taking everything we talked about in the context of the show and kind of bringing it together and fast forward 300 and, you know, 50 days from now, and you're making the decision on if you're going to go to WPPI again, uh, Chris Berry, knowing what you know now, 
what are what's the likelihood you can throw a percentage on it or make it binary yes or no what's what, what's the chance of you going back to vegas for the next wppi in 2020 i say it's 50 50 at this point mm. and i can I just easily, wrote that down <laughs> yeah i'm like yeah i'm like and i can be easily swayed like either 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 way yeah you know um i feel like what would you sway know, you like what what would get you to to change that percentage to to go yeah in either direction like wow, what would man, what would make you more apt to go and what would make you say oh, you know it's not going to be worth it this year what would make me stay would be exactly the reasons why I went to this year's WPPI was mm-hmm. to generate more business um, but what would make me you know go is just the people you know being able to you know have dinners in a room with you know, 60, 80 people that I really look up to because of the people they are, the business that they're doing or how they're teaching or how they're giving back to the community, you know, like being able to engage with you guys really in person, you know, to be honest, like it's cool to see you guys, you know, it's cool to give you guys a hug and, and have those like, perfectly random almost planned moments you know in passing you know mm-hmm. or you know sit at a booth and be nerds with you know my friends at fuji or you know look at the s1 and like and ooh ah over it you know or get your hands on paper you know or see what's going on with new film and you know different things like that, learning about business or just being inspired by being in the same room with someone that's not going to judge you because, you know, you're a little bit behind and, and feeling inspired just by being in that, in that space, mm-hmm. you know, those mm-hmm. are the things that'll, that'll get me back out there. Um, and also shoot, man, just to be honest, we had childcare. So at the last minute, <laughs> Oh, right. That, yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? My wife just got a great new job and, you know, and, and she goes to work at like six 30 in the morning and we were struggling to figure out, you know, how in the middle of the week is this trip going to happen? And, and just in general. And, you know, that, that part worked out, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. so it's, it's a combination of things, but man, I, I got to see some fresh faces and, you know, and have just a different type of experience, like the curated, you know, you know, jump on this track and be led through a portion of your WPPI experience sounds like a phenomenal idea. Um, I, I would love to see something, something like that, you know? Yeah. For, it's for like you, you, I think you hit it on the head, part of the the nail on the head with the childcare thing, right? Cause you know, if, if the WPPI organizers look at other industries, like say the cruise ship industry, um, they have childcare that take all the pressure off the off the parents, and I have never been on a cruise. But what I hear is they take all the pressure off the parents, uh, yeah. and the kids have a phenomenal time. It's not like they're going to you know a little yeah, they can't kid, wait a kid jail. <laughs> yeah, they they cry when they have to leave there. Yeah, yeah, and and the parents can go have fun and get drunk and do whatever, and then yep. you know all that stuff. What if they had that for a conference like WPPI? You know, so. Again, another another good tip, Troy. What about you, man? What what's the percentage uh, that you'll go? I heard you 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 buried the lead or revealed the lead with the fifty fifty. So, <laughs> you know, as he was as he was getting ready to talk, I'm like, I'm gonna write mine down so I don't forget. And it, you know, it's fifty fifty. You know, what, what's gonna happen for me is I'm not I'm there to socialize. To be honest, I'm there to socialize, and I know this is gonna sound totally arrogant. I don't mean it to sound this way, but I really don't think that the WPPI is anything to teach me. Um, the people that I saw, the lectures that I saw, the 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 arrogance from the stage. Mm. Um, I don't think there's anything there for me. Uh, I hope that there is. And and I and I celebrity talent on stage means nothing to me. I don't care who it is. I'm only I'm only interested in content. And I'm and I'm pretty confident that that's how it is for most people. Um, but for me, what I'm going to do is when it gets close to WPPI, I'm going to start pinging on my friends. I'm going to say, are you going to be there? Mm-hmm. And it's it's really going to come down to, OK, well, Frederick will be there, but Chris won't be there. Uh, OK, but Renee's going to be there. I haven't seen her in a while. Y- you know, and I'm going to go down my list and I'm going to be like, man, mm-hmm. yes or no. Yeah. And that's literally that's literally what's going to what's going to make it for me. Wow. Yeah. If I can add one more thing to that, guys. Yeah. I think um, there are a couple of people in my local community and just in the photographic community in general who I just love supporting as well. You know, so if, if say, for example, my friend Justin Haugen, he's awesome. He's a wedding photographer here in Tucson. He's he put himself on a really important path a few years ago. And he's and, and each WPPI, 
I get to cheer him on like happily. It's, oh, wow. He's like, dude, like not only is he making goals based on his own influencers and, you know, he's seeing people in his community, you know, the greater community, like this is a place where I can do that too. You know, so if I show up and I see that and I cheer him on, you know, I feel like I'm also there to just be a supportive friend. You know what I mean? So I think that's something that'll get me out there as well, just supporting everybody that I'm friends with. And I want to just see do well, you yeah. know, that's community, right? But that's totally. that's what we're talking about. That's yep. the that's the community. Yeah. I want that community. I want a list of parties and the costs and the locations. <laughs> I want to be oh able my to, God, that was <laughs> right. Right. I mean, I want to be able to say, yeah, well, I'm going to go to this party and, and I want to know which, who of my friends are going to which parties. So I know which ones to go to. I want to be able to go to multiple parties in a night if I want to <laughs> and stagger them. I want to know like the night before and this is just anally like the night before I want to be able to sit either on an app or, or on the web or whatever and say, all right. In the morning, um, like I was saying that, you know, the concierge sort of, you know, led group uh, at eight o'clock the, before the show opens or at nine, the show opens at 10. So at nine o'clock, we're meeting for coffee here. This group, we're going to have our, yeah. you know, our, our, our group coffee, you know, that that's provided. And then they're going to usher us all in and we get to see all the products before anyone sees them. And we're going to go to each booth and, the, you know, that level, you know, of stuff. And then tonight I'm going to dinner because there's a sponsored dinner and then there's three, these two parties. And then, you know, I want that. I want that level of, of, uh, you know, of knowing what my schedule is going to be versus the anarchy of like, Chris, even if you, you know, even meeting friends and, and people that, that like, like uh, Troy, you're saying, you know, the, the serendipitous meeting of the wedding photographer in the booth, in the Nikon booth, that's great too. I want to have that, but right. I want rails, right? <laughs> I, want, mm-hmm. I, want to, I want rails, but I want to be able to hop off the train if I want to, you know? And you talked about parties, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, we went to light, that was fun for about an hour. Yeah, uh, and then, and then, you know, I want a classy party. I mean, I'll mm-hmm. even pay extra. I mean, literally, like I'll, I'll, I'll pay, let's go to a nice place. Let's have dinner. Let's have some, some manufacturers there, make it a little mini whatever show and tell, but it's all super engaging and I'll, and I'll pay another 50 or 75 bucks. So I have an amazing dinner we can hang out, yeah. have good music and, and, but be able to talk. I mean, I get the party scene, like that's great, but, but trade show floor is one experience. Uh, classroom is another experience and then nightclub. Right. You know, yeah. where's the, <laughs> right. I, I want to make new friends. I yeah. really, I want to, I want to meet new people and I can't do that. Yeah. You, you know, all FOMO. the time. And you know what FOMO, the fear of missing out, like, mm-hmm. Hey, did you hear about, <laughs> yeah. did you hear about the XYZ party? <laughs> No, I didn't hear about no, that party. Really. Uh, or even worse, hey, the XYZ party was amazing last night. Did you go? No, I didn't hear no, about it. No, I didn't. You know? No, I couldn't find it in the TM app. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. find it. <laughs> it's a secret menu. Exactly. Secret well, yeah. menu. You have the animal style uh, Las Vegas WPPI experience. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, guys, let's wrap this up. So normally yeah. on the show, I do a segment called Picks of the Week where you guys get to recommend something to the, the TWIP audience that's photography related. Obviously, everything we're talking about is photography related today. So I'm going to flip it a little bit and ask you, Troy Miller, I'll start with you, man. Um, your pick of the week for WPPI, like in other words, the thing that you remember most from the show or the show floor, was there a product that you saw? I know you bought some stuff there. Like what, what stands out as like, okay, you know, I got this thing or I learned this tip and I would not have learned it had I not gone to WPPI. So, you know, I'm a Nikon shooter. No, I heard and, a rumor. Uh, <laughs> I heard a rumor. <laughs> and I love my, I love my mirrorless stuff. Yeah, you do. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm really, really, really impressed with Panasonic's full frame mirrorless camera. And, you know, all, you know, I fondled it a little bit and I don't really know the, the, the system, but, but here's what I think is exciting about that is that it's challenging the other manufacturers. It's, it's, it's really driving the technology and the industry that I'm going to win from, even, even though, you know, I might stay Nikon for a long time. The fact that, that Panasonic has entered the full frame uh, market is just going to, it's just going to be good for all of us. You know, a rising tide lifts all boats. So that, that to me was pivotal and I thought it was awesome. And then I just love the fact that Panasonic had a really big showing there and it wasn't just the big three, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's really important in our industry that we're able to have that happen. 
So that that would be that would be mine. And, I, and I've talked more about that to, to my friends who didn't go uh, than pretty much anything else, because I just thought, man, what a brave move for a company. Yeah. Right. Like that's 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 hard. You know, that's hard and it's expensive and it's it's, you know, so, you know, big high five to the Panasonic crew for doing that i i will pass that along and as you know <laughs> i was emceeing the panasonic booth and i'll tell you you know a little, in, a little inside baseball this is the largest booth or that was the largest booth that panasonic has ever had so you know it was interesting because of the, dich the dichotomy of the a small show you know this the, the show attendance was probably i don't know if i don't know the exact metrics in comparison to previous years, but it was smaller than previous years. But yet Panasonic's presence there was larger than they've ever done, which I think partly had the effect of even magnifying even further how big the Panasonic right. booth seemed, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, the, the S1 is pretty interesting. We'll do a show on that whenever I get my hands on one. Panasonic. I mean, there were Panasonic <laughs> banners hanging outside. There were, I mean, Panasonic Lanyards. really made a good show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chris, what about you? Your pick of the week in terms of WPPI, your one, if no, one, it could be it. more than one. If you, you know, and it could be Fuji yeah, related I, if you want. Go ahead. I do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Chris Barrett's been talking about Fuji again. <laughs> but it, it's kind of, it's, it's. I guess it's two or threefold. One, I'm going to piggyback off what Troy said. Just the the competition, like the the playing field is really really intense. There's technologies that you would assume that are in higher end products that are making them way down to the $900 price point for the Sony and the Fuji bodies that that are coming out. You know, you have Panasonic. They're implementing like multiple. Um, subject tracking and face tracking and eye tracking and how good is your hand holding ability with an you know accelerometer in the body you know and you know pushing contrast AF it's an incredible system you know you got Canon you know who dropped what fourteen hundred bucks for their their new light full frame body um, mm -hmm. which. You know, you go over to Fuji and they have their $900 offering too, and they do firmware, it's just like these other companies are starting to do. So the idea of competition and firmware updating and creating more value, um, which may in turn, you know, kind of reflect on why it's a lower amount of people going to WPPI, because yeah. the gear is, is in our faces all the time. Um, but as far as something that was pretty interesting to me um, was this lighting system called Anthem One. Hmm. Um, it is, um, from what I understand, it is an it's an it's an LED system where you can take the copper plated LED out and put another LED in. It's got a battery to it. it. You know, it's got this incredible amount of light. Can light up like a half an acre or something ridiculous like that. But it was incredible. Like the 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 wavelengths of light that this brings out when shown upon darker skin tones. Like the guy said, he spent like six or seven years developing this removable LED from this system. Nice. I'm still going to dig on it because doing night shooting for real estate photography with one of these, I think they're like seventeen hundred bucks. It, it sounds like it's a total game changer for for sets, for weddings, for large pieces of real estate. You want to light it up. So, yeah. Um, tell, tell them you're going to review it for TWIP and, and have them send you a review unit. I, I definitely want one. Yeah. I definitely want one to, to try out because it was very impressive. Um, I mean, they're 21,000 lumens, 25,000 lumens, 30,000. It's like the surface uh, of the sun, right? <laughs> it's, inc it's incredible. Anyway, so this is just is the one. Um, other than that, gear-wise – there wasn't really there wasn't really much that was like oh my gosh I can't wait to see it can't wait to buy it can't wait to feel it yeah. um, where did that show go guys by the way and thank you for that Chris but where where did that show go where it, it, it used to be was it like CES or NAB or 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 Photo Plus Expo but the show where or maybe it's gone where you go and all this new stuff is there. You know, like, like, have you seen the new drones from DJI? Have you seen the new mirrorless camera over there? You got to go over to the so-and-so booth to check out that camera. Hey, and there's new lighting systems from this manufacturer. You got to go check it out. Oh, and by the way, B&H is in the corner over there selling this stuff and will and it has free shipping if you want to go buy it. Have your credit card ready. Where is that? That's gone. Is that is that era over, Troy Miller? I mean, that was you remember that, right, back in the day? Oh. I do. I mean, at WPPI, that was where I, I they did the first announcement for like the DH50, 
you know, and they had an 80 to two, 80 to 400 lens that they announced at WPPI. Uh, Sigma last year announced a full set of uh, prime lenses at WPPI for the Sony mount. I mean, those things used to happen all the time, but you've got to, you know, you've got to realize, and I, I know you, I know you guys get it, is that with social media and social marketing and stuff, why would the camera manufacturers wait? Yeah, they. Right. I mean, it, I, I think it's better for them to have the the, the equipment there to buy, if possible, at least right. put hands on, and let you be excited about it. That's going to drive you there. Yeah. Um, so yeah. maybe it's just a shift in in the way that these things are done. I, it, well, hey, I'm an online marketer. I, I agree with you 100 percent because you can build a a highly effective product launch online that will reach a lot of people while getting leads and email addresses for remarketing and right. you know and you to do it from the comfort of your room you know <laughs> where you are right now versus spending millions of dollars on there so yeah no no i agree it's part of part of evolution one last thing i wanted to one last sort of topic i wanted to cover real quick before we end this is you know these these booths and now now switch gears you were talking to the conference organizers before now you're talking to the people that purchase booths you know the fujis the sony's the panasonics um these booths are not cheap right you know it's, some of them are are we won't go into numbers but they're very very expensive just for the booth space not to mention the travel and accommodations out there and per diem and all that stuff for the carbon-based life forms that inhabit the booths. <laughs> right, so, <laughs> right. So, so all that money, and and uh, you know, Chris Barry, I'll throw this to you first. So all that money that a, a manufacturer would spend on a trade show like this, playing devil's advocate, why wouldn't they take that money and drop it on a Kardashian, <laughs> you know, right. and say, right. hey, you know, do four or five Instagram posts for me and we'll give you a half a million dollars or, or $200,000 <laughs> or whatever for me and drive them to this landing page that has an exclusive video of you trying on clothes, you know, in photographed with our new gear. And, but to right. see that they must enter their email address. You're right. Now, now somebody's going to sure, do exactly sure. that. That's, you just made someone or saved someone a lot of money. A lot but of money. But I was money. thinking that. Like, why would – if if your goal is to expose your product to people – now, granted, the you know, I know the, the manufacturers are saying, but, you know, the Kardashian audience isn't necessarily our audience. Those aren't our customers. A percentage of them will be because we're talking millions and millions of people. But, you know, it just seems like that – in some ways, that's the path of least resistance or a hybrid of the two, a hybrid of a, of a conference slash trade show and some sort of influencer marketing like that, Chris. So why why wouldn't they? Would that resonate with you? You know, I know you're you, you still have, you know, a, 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 a tail end in the millennial space. <laughs> yeah, very, very, the very last end, dead skin and pale skin. It's just and, about and to that, disappear yeah, over the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you kids! The desert. Um, you know, I want to. I want to make sure I say this in a in a respectful way, um, but I probably won't. There's <laughs> there's a lot of I think a lot of I think there's a lot of freeloading in some of these these camera brands with these influencers and you know these sm small little audiences um, where they you know fly them out, give them a lens, send them a lens or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and and they and they hype up all this stuff. You know, and that saves people a ton of money because, I mean, in my in my little studio, you know, I have I can it's a small production company, mm -hmm. you know, and they didn't have to give me anything. Mm -hmm. I bought it all, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm a I'm a I'm a fanboy, you know, and I, and I feel like that that influencer um, has kind of been synonymous with with sales, whether or not. I want to admit that my favorite YouTuber, you know, is such a great guy or girl and, you know, is going to be honest, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, that that those companies and companies in general, I mean, it's it's good business. If you have somebody that's going to buy your stuff anyway, you know, why are you going to spend money on commercials or radio or print or whatever when Google will host that person's 4K video about a new lens that you sent to them and everybody else like them and they just have, you know, a million impressions yeah. or, you know, in, in a day, whereas they go to WPPI and they spend, you know, whatever amount of money on a booth for three days and staff it. And then they throw a swanky party and a release and they have to fly everything there and break <laughs> everything down. Yeah. I'm just going to offload a little bit of this onto this 
you know, YouTuber and this, you know, social media person, and that'll make up savings and also impressions. And in, in the end, probably more, more sales because those guys are cool. Those girls are cool. You know, they shoot with that and, you know, they think this is great and they have, you know, girls and this and, yeah. you know, it's working. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know, Troy. Troy, what do you think about that? I mean, you know, offloading some of that budget over to influencer marketing does it does it make sense to do that? Yeah, yeah, I think I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's crowdsourcing, right? I mean, so what you're doing is is like, you know, when I got the new Z7 or Z6, I mean, I don't know how they would find me, but um, I freaking love that camera, and I did a review, I recorded some stuff. I mean, but but you, you let the let the crowd uh, tell you about the gear now. You know, I tend to think that big manufacturers, big companies, they, they don't want to move a lot, right? Like they're really afraid to make big moves because right. they've been doing it this way for so long. And I get that. And that's just that's a hard thing. What we're what we're suggesting that these companies maybe do are things that they're just like, oh no, not on my watch. Yeah. <laughs> the next CEO can do that. Right. <laughs> but right. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Um, I mean, these Japanese companies, you know, the, the Panasonic and Canon, Nikon, et cetera, these are Japanese country, companies who are who are known for being very pragmatic about the decision making process. Right. So. Oh, right. I mean, but, but if you look at like Nikon and I can only speak to that because I know them pretty well, mm -hmm. is that their ambassadors, their top level ambassadors had absolutely no influence in me buying that camera. I never saw their face with it. I never mm -hmm. saw them shooting with it. I saw no no social media promos with them with the cameras in hand. I didn't see any real world humans uh, with with this camera that I wanted to go buy. Um, so it didn't influence me at all. I went down and I I I. I you know, talk to my camera guy and I, I looked, I read the specs and like, yep, I'm in. And I, and I pre-ordered it and that was it. Yeah. So I did my research. Um, if I could speak real quick to the, to the vendors that are on the floor. Yeah. Engagement. You need to engage with the people. I can't tell you how many booths I walked by and one, I didn't know what they were selling. And two, they were sitting in chairs at the back of the booth talking to each other. Mm -hmm. That's, I, I mean, I mean, that's, that is not, that is not going to get you a win. Talking to you, Savage. <laughs> 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 um, and I, and I, I'll tell you, I think, I think Sigma you know, everybody knows B and H. They've always got people out there handing out magazines. It's that kind of thing that helps. But Sigma, they have uh, they have this wonderful woman that stands out in front of the booth and talks to you and scans your badge and and she's just. I wish I could remember her name because she deserves a lot of credit. Because you walk past that booth, it doesn't matter how busy they are or who's speaking. She's out in front of those people. Like, hey, you wanna you wanna you wanna scan for a free lens? You wanna you wanna come and see our speaker? These are so it's engagement. It I don't have to walk past that booth and not know what's going on. Yeah, I know that's hard. I know that's hard because I've talked to my Miller friends in the booth and they don't want to be pushy and they want you know. Well, there's companies you can hire to do that. I mean, guerrilla marketing companies that that's how they make their living in Vegas is by helping companies that that set up at, at whatever trade show and they have people, guys and girls that go out and drum up business and hand out flyers and hand out keychains or, you know, yeah. memory sticks or whatever. So it's certainly yeah. delicate and it's, it's more complicated than we're making it sound obviously, you know, yeah. it's, well, it's, cause it's, we it's... can, we can, we're <laughs> again, we're armed here quarterbacking. We're not playing the game. We're just, you know, we're just, a, we're punditry here. So. Right. 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 <laughs> you see a crack, uh, uh, how we fix the crack is is a way more complicated situation. Exactly, but. exactly. Well, cool guys. Let's let's draw this to a close. Um, Chris Berry, if people want to catch up with you online, see some of that famous drone photography you do, or hire you to do real estate photography, etc. Where should they go? <laughs> Instagram at Mickman, M I K M A A N. Also have a little project I'm starting slowly called the Hybrid Media Collective. That's on Instagram as well, and also have the YouTube channel called the same thing. Awesome, so, very cool. Look at you, entrepreneur in it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And what about you, Troy Miller? People want to see you exploding things safely and legally, or <laughs> what? Well, the pictures thereof. I don't. 
I don't have any videos because I, I don't want I don't want to be the guy who You don't you have know, any but, evidence? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um now for me it's all things spicy jello, all one word spicy jello, YouTube channel, Instagram, website. And from there you can you can reach me. You can see my wedding work at imageryconcepts.com. But all things all things come from spicy jello. So love it. Well, thank thank you to both of you guys for coming on. This of was course. impromptu. Yeah. Yeah, I basically messaged both of you guys last night. Like, <laughs> yeah. And you know the you guys both know the impetus of me messaging you was one of our members, Stephen Sharp in the Twit Pro community, was like, You guys should do a WPBI roundup. And I was like, We should do a WPBI roundup. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the wisdom of the Twit Pro community. I love it. I yes, love it. Yes. Crowdsourcing. It's Crowd crowdsourcing. Yeah. yeah, the older I get, the more I'm gonna start crowdsourcing. So <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, speaking of getting older, a happy birthday belated to Chris Berry. Chris Berry recently Thank you. recently had I'm not gonna say what year what what birthday this was, but you had a very significant <laughs> birthday that ends in a zero, right? <laughs> yep, the four. Forty. Uh, <laughs> wow. Those are the days, huh, Joey? Is that what yeah, you're gonna say? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember. I was the already. 40. I was almost twenty years into my career by then. <laughs> <laughs> I just, well, that did not sound good. I'm you not... just, now you just you just make yourself feel bad about yourself. So, yeah, that's true. All right, well, guys, thank you so much for coming on. It's always a pleasure catching up with you guys. I feel like we're WPPI again, catching up and talking about stuff. Yeah, except nobody's bringing us drinks. No one's bringing us overpriced drinks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's part of you know. Troy said he paid almost two grand. Part of that two grand was like five hundred in drinks. I bet. All right. Crazy, yeah, crazy, yeah. Food and we won't talk it. about my my thirty dollars of Dasani bottled water from the <laughs> mini bar in my yeah. Vidara room. <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh, two bottles of water, Chris Berry. Two bottles of water about this big each, fourteen ninety five each. No, not even kidding you. I'm not That's even a kidding. Compact you. disc. Yeah, it is just ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I was checking out of the hotel, literally checking out of the hotel. And they're like, "Would you like a printed?" version of your receipt i always say yes yeah can you print it and email it so i get the printed version i'm just looking down it real quick make sure they didn't jack me on anything and i was yeah. like what's this what's 14 14 dasani water <laughs> oh my gosh but they Dude. thought it would be less expensive if they rounded it down to 14.95 instead of just 15, yeah that was just right like good marketing there yeah yeah that's a whole <laughs> different show on hotel <laughs> vegas <laughs> hospitality you know <laughs> Don't get me started. I'm still salty about that. I'm still <laughs> salty. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you both for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, no problem. Cool. And uh, folks, This Week in Photo listeners and watchers, if you want to keep up with This Week in Photo, just head over to thisweekinphoto.com. There you'll find everything that we do, including the Twip Pro community we mentioned that you can join up to, um, the critique sessions that I do with Troy Miller, um, are there in the menu and a ton of other things. If you want to subscribe to us on YouTube, just click that subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when we release new episodes. And that's about it. You know what? I think it's time to take that lens cap off. This episode of This Week in Photo is brought to you by Creative Live. Head over to creativelive.com and choose from over 1,000 amazing courses. Use the code TWIP10 at checkout to get $10 off your first purchase. This episode of TWIP is brought to you by Datacolor and the new Spider X Pro. The Spider X Pro is designed for serious photographers and designers seeking a fast, accurate, and easy to use monitor calibration solution. You can check out the Spider X Pro at spiderx.data color.com. This is Twitter.